Thank you. You guys sound great, as always. Good morning. I am Sean Buck, Director of the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, and on behalf of the dedicated cemetery staff, I welcome you to your State Veterans Cemetery. Today's ceremony is being hosted by the American Legion Department of New Hampshire. The colors are being presented by the New Hampshire Joint Forces Color Guard under the command of Command Sergeant Major Christopher St. Cyr, who will be retiring this summer after 41 years of service to our nation. I invite you, if you are able, to please stand for the posting of the colors and remain standing for the National Anthem, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the Invocation. During the National Anthem and Pledge of Allegiance, it is customary for military members and veterans to stand at attention and render a hand salute. Civilians should remove headgear and place their right hand over their heart until the command order arms is given. Sergeant at Arms, post the colors. Good morning. You can all feel free to join in if, if you if you want to. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail? stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave Please uncover. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There's an army post in Missouri that bears the name Fort Leonard Wood. General Leonard Wood was a former Army Chief of Staff and Medal of Honor recipient from the Geronimo Wars. General Wood, along with his Colonel Teddy Roosevelt, led the charge up San Juan Heights. Of special note to all of us here today on this Memorial Day is the fact that Leonard Wood was a son of the Granite State for he was born and raised in Winchester, New Hampshire. He once said, reflecting on the words of Francis Scott Key, and America's identification as the land of the free and the home of the brave, he said, it is only because of our America's brave 
that we are able to say with complete honesty that we live in the land of the free. Today, my brothers and sisters, it is our honor, it is our duty to remember those brave men and women who have given us the priceless gift of freedom. For their patriotism was not a patriotism of words, but of deeds. Today, my brothers and sisters, on this annual day of remembrance, as we honor our soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and Airmen, and their battles end, may we ever remember their sense of duty, their love of country, and their sacrifices. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, who heals the grief of the brokenhearted, let your fatherly goodness be upon all of your creation, and especially those missing from our ranks on this Memorial Day. Bless all of those assembled here today on this most hallowed ground, as we honor those for whom the trumpets have sounded on the other side. We commend to your gracious care and self-keeping all men and women in uniform, home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your grace and with your guiding hand. Strengthen them in their trials and give them courage to face the perils which may beset them. And grant to all who serve this great nation of ours the assurance of America's undying gratitude for their sacrifices during those crowded hours when they ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. And finally, we pray for true peace and the end of all battles that will enable all men and women to live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. All glory and honor be to you, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our honored guests. Please hold your applause until after everyone has been introduced. The governor of the state of New Hampshire, the Honorable Christopher Sununu. United States Senator, the Honorable Jean Shaheen. United States Senator, the Honorable Maggie Hassan. United States Congressman, the Honorable Christopher Pappas. The Adjutant General of New Hampshire, Major General David Michalides. American Legion Department of New Hampshire Commander, Commander Leo Paquin. I now ask any of our New Hampshire State Executive Counselors, State Senators, and State Representatives in the audience to raise their hand or stand to be recognized. We also extend a very warm welcome to the residents of our New Hampshire Veterans Home in Tilton. For them, you can clap right now. I would also, would all veterans in attendance please stand and be recognized. We are grateful for your service. <laughs> Lastly, if there are any Gold Star family members in attendance, if you are comfortable doing so, would you please stand to be recognized. Let's clap for all of them really loud, it, the whole group. It is my honor to introduce the Adjutant General of New Hampshire, Major General David Michalides. To Governor Sununu, Senator Sushin and Hassan, Congressman Pappas, fellow veterans, families and friends. On this solemn occasion, on this hallowed ground, we remember the men and women who fought and died for our nation. In New Hampshire, our state's honor roll of the fallen numbers in the thousands and touches every war and conflict dating back to the Revolutionary War. Today, we honor their courage, their dedication, and their sacrifice. We remember the lives cut short, the families left behind, and the futures that would never be. These courageous men and women defended our ideals, protected our lands, preserved our freedoms, and established order around the world. Their accomplishments were neither granted nor given. 
They fought and died for them. Their sacrifice was in the service of something bigger than themselves. The late General Colin Powell, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State, once said of service members who die in battle, their sacrifice in the name of peace and freedom have made this nation what it is today. By their sacrifice, they give us our strength. We the living must ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain. Let us reflect on their sacrifice as we mourn with their families who had suffered the greatest loss. We must continue to honor their lives and their memory, telling their stories and keeping their legacies alive. But most of all, we must continue to live and serve with honor so we may, as a nation, be worthy of their sacrifice. And finally, let us also remember those young men and women who continue to serve today around the globe to pre preserve our freedoms. At this time, it was my distinct honor to introduce the Honorable Christopher T. Sununu, Governor of the State of New Hampshire. All right, good morning. Good morning. It is great to see everybody out. A beautiful day the Lord has given us, to say the least. Um, a lot of speeches today. I'll try to make mine brief. And I always say that, and I never do. I apologize. I'm number seven of eight kids, and I tend to talk too much. No one paid attention to me if I ever said anything, so I, I tend to, to talk a little bit. But today is a day to, to talk about a lot of different things. We talk about sacrifice. We talk about what this country is about. We talk about the idea that freedom is not free. We talk about those men and women who have given their lives the ultimate sacrifice. We talk about their families. The families that are here, the families that are, are with us today, but are actually all over this country, who have lost individuals that continue to uh, effectively pay that sacrifice. And then in turn, it's, for me, it's always about the, it's always about the homework. What, so what, what does that mean for us? Are we here just to make a speech and say thank you? No, right? We have to take on some of that obligation, right? We live in this amazing country. We all have this amazing opportunity to wake up today in the United States of America. And that was not by accident. That was, that was a lot of hard work. That was a lot of sacrifice. That was a lot of lives given in the defense of this country. And there's a sense of gratitude that we all owe, an obligation that we all have to now carry. So what is that? For me, I'm a dad. I talk a lot about my kids. I've, I've, I've talked here before about this, the idea that we have to go back home. We have to talk about what Memorial Day is about. And we have to talk about it not just on Memorial Day. I mean, it's easy to do today because there's parades and there's, you know, uh, celebrations. There's, there's uh, memorials as we're, we're doing today. But we, uh, we have to do it 365 days a year. This is not a one-day obligation, right? And I was, I was scrolling through yesterday. I was scrolling through the news clips. And I'm looking through the papers and all that. I, I'm one of the few quasi-young people that still reads a newspaper. I love a good, good newspaper. And I noticed, and not to be too overly negative about it, but... I started going through it and, and I started reading news stories about the debt limit and about politics and culture wars and part of, all these things that clog up the news. And about one out of every four, one out of every five stories was about Memorial Day uh, or about a family or a, a service member uh, who, had, who had sacrificed everything, right? And I thought, that doesn't seem like enough. And so I guess what I took from that is it's so easy. It is so easy for us to get distracted. It is so easy for us to, I don't want to say look the other way. I don't think we do it intentionally. I don't think we do it with, with uh, malfeasance, so to say. I think, I think we get distracted with all the craziness that goes on in our everyday lives. Now, you're here. If you're here at this amazing cemetery, and once again, uh, Director Buck has done and his team have done a phenomenal job. I always remind folks this is known as one of, if not the best, uh, uh, veteran cemeteries in the country. And again, congratulations to him and his team. Lots of to do. The fact that folks from all over the country that, that come here. But it is so easy to get distracted nowadays. And... And we can't be distracted. We have to bring that home with us. We have to instill it with, in, into our kids what service is. And service can mean a lot of things, but when you're talking about the men and women who signed on that dotted line, and it was General Michaelitis, I always say, he, was, he gave me the term, something you guys have, have known for years, but that, that idea of soldier for life, right? That we're going to honor these men and women. We're going to honor these soldiers, these airmen, 
these service members. Because when they sign up, it isn't just for a four-year or an eight-year stint. It isn't just for one battle or for one war. It is for life, and it is their family sacrifice that they carry with them. And sometimes the ultimate sacrifice, which is what we really honor today. So, let's bring it home. Let's do everything we can not to be distracted, to not get tied up in, in these other things. That I'm not saying they're not important. But I guess ultimately the obligation we really have is, let's get our priorities straight. Right? Let's get our priorities straight about what, what made this country, what made this kind of day possible. Not this day in terms of Memorial Day, but this idea that we all, this opportunity that we all had to wake up in this amazing country. And frankly, this amazing state. I'm obviously very proud of the Live Free Die State. I stand here with two other former governors as well. I think we all share this amazing pride. Um, but it really isn't by accident. We stand on the shoulders of thousands of men and women that made this possible today. Today we honor the service members who gave their lives. Today we honor their families. But let's not make sure it's just today. Let's carry it with us. And it is easy to get distracted. We all have a lot of things going on. As I was saying, we get it. If you're here today in this amazing, we get it. But let's make sure our coworkers get it, that our friends and neighbors get it, that our family members who might not be here today get it. Let's make sure that next year we have this amazing crowd, we double it in size, that people know to take the day off, to spend the time, to show the gratitude, right? That's the obligation that we have to take out of here every single time. Instill it in the next generation. I saw a statistic, I was just talking to the general about this, uh, recruitment rates in America, lowest it's ever been. Lowest is the Vietnam War, since they've really been keeping track. Wow. Holy smokes, right? That should stop us all in our tracks a little bit, right? Because it's, we, we, right now we're not doing, we're getting distracted. We're not doing what we should be doing to make sure it is a headline. And not just a headline of, of the sacrifice, but a headline of the pride. A headline of the work, of the responsibility that we all have collectively as 330 Ameri million Americans to stand up and do what we can to offer the services when, when we can, especially in the military where the sacrifice is so great and always so needed. Not just here in, in the United States, but across the world. Right? I always say, world peace through America's strength. And that happens because of the men, men and women that we honor today. So let's take, it, let's take it home. So it's a sad day. It can be a very somber day to be sure, but it can be also a day of great pride that we instill in ourselves, that we walk away. It's easier to do when it's, when it's great weather, to be sure. But it really is a, a, great, a great sense of pride that we, that we carry. And it's with that that we say thank you. Sometimes it's all you can say, thank you. You can't say it enough, right? For what they've given, for this country that they've offered us, for this home that they've offered our friends and family and coworkers and all of us that are here. You know. It can get overwhelming, you can get emotional about it, but that's okay too, right? That instills a little bit of that pride. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being part of something bigger than yourselves. That's the mission. That's what founded and make, made this country so great. And God bless it. God bless this great state. God bless this country and all the men and women that made it possible. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Governor Sununu. Now please enjoy a musical tribute sung by Bridget Ivey, a member of Unit 51, the American Legion Auxiliary. Hello again. Would you please join me in singing Battle Hymn of the Republic, the first stanza and the first chorus. You do not have to stand if you do not want to. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed his faithful lightning, his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on.
you, Bridget. Melissa Greenwood, Department President of the American Legion Auxiliary, will now read In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing, flying scares head mid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold and high. If we fa break faith with us do who die, we shall not sleep through poppies grow, grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Melissa. Please welcome the Honorable Jean Shaheen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Sean, and thank you to everyone who's made this beautiful service possible. Um, Governor Sununu, Senator Hassan, Congressman Pappas, General Michelides, to all the veterans and your families who are here today, thank you for coming out. And um, Bridget, thank you for inviting us all to sing. If my husband were here, he would tell me not to sing, <laughs> but I do it with great enthusiasm, so I appreciate the invitation. And Chaplain, thank you for mentioning Fort Leonard Wood. My father, who was from Missouri, was stationed at Fort Leonard Wood during World War II, and it's a reminder of his generation, the greatest generation, and all that they gave so that we could be here today like all of you veterans and families. I'm so honored to be here with all of you for a solemn and really important responsibility to honor our fallen heroes. When threats to our security arise, our country's called on its best and brightest to keep us safe and to keep alive the promise of a just and free American America for not just us, but for future generations. Many have traveled far from home to see that promise fulfilled. And some, in fulfilling that promise, have given, in the words of President Lincoln, their last full measure of devotion. My father's brother, Brunel, was one of those who gave his last full measure. Um, and I remember as a child, Memorial Day was always a time when we visited veteran cemeteries. We put flags on the grave and we remembered the uncle that I never knew because he was killed before I was born. But from the battlefields of Gettysburg to the trenches of war-torn Europe, amid two great wars through 20 years of combat in Afghanistan and Iraq, with so many world conflicts in between, America's finest and bravest have answered the call in defense of liberty. No matter the time that passes, the pain of their loss dims, but it never leaves us. Pausing to remember their sacrifice is one small way that we can ensure that their memory is not forgotten. We all stand on hallowed grounds today. And while I always treasure the opportunity to be with military families and our veterans on Memorial Day, especially in this beautiful place, I want to urge everyone, like the governor did, to not wait for Memorial Day. Remember to check in on military families in our communities who have made sacrifices on behalf of all of us. It's on all of us to support our heroes when they come home. Sometimes the adjustment to civilian life can be difficult, and it's up to us, our community members, their community members, to remind them that they're not alone. Let us keep in mind the sacrifices of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and guardians, and be sure we're there to support them 
whenever they may need it. As we remember all that was lost in our wars, let us also remember what was gained. To the fallen patriots we honor today, we owe not only a debt of gratitude, but also a sacred promise to live with their strength of spirit and to make the most of the peace and freedoms that they fought to secure. Embedded in this tribute is a deep appreciation for what they and their families, for what all of the families of our men and women who serve in the military, for what you sacrifice. On this solemn day, and I hope every day, we keep these patriots in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Shaheen. Now please welcome the Honorable Maggie Hassan. Well, good morning. And thank you, Director Buck, uh, for your introduction, for being MC today, but more importantly, for your service and for everything that you do on behalf of New Hampshire's service members. And to Commanders Kenny and Papwin, I look forward to your remarks. Thank you for your service and leadership. To the General and the Governor, it is great to be with you today, as it is great to be with my colleagues from Congress and all of our distinguished guests up here. Um, and Bridget, I want to add my thanks for inviting us all to join you. I think it is uh, particularly important that sometimes we all sing together and, and come together as one. Most important, I want to thank all of the service members and your families who are here today. Thank you for your dedication to our country. Memorial Day is a time to honor America's and New Hampshire's fallen. It's a day that should cause us all to express our gratitude to those who've made the ultimate sacrifice for their country and, and thank their families as well. And it is a day for reflection on the unique nature of military service and what it has meant for the preservation of our democracy and our way of life, and on the unique heroism displayed by those who serve. In particular, I want to reflect on the history of Granite Staters who have risked their lives to protect our freedoms and on the obligation that rightly places on all of us to build a democracy that is ever worthy of their sacrifice. Our democracy has endured for more than 200 years because members of each successive generation have been willing to step up and risk their lives in order to safeguard freedom for years to come. On Memorial Day, we honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Granite Staters know well the extraordinary commitment that it takes to protect freedom and our democracy. Nearly one in 10 Granite Staters are veterans and our commitment to service dates back centuries. As you know, New Hampshire is home to John Stark, who led Granite Staters during the revolution on battlefields from Bunker Hill to Bennington. Near the end of his life, Stark wrote a letter honoring those who died in the revolution, writing, live free or die, death is not the greatest of evils. Like John Stark, the Granite Staters who have served our country in uniform know that there are things greater than ourselves that are worth fighting for and possibly dying for. They fight not just for their families, but for all of our families. They risk their lives not just for their own individual freedom, but for everyone's freedom. And some ultimately lose their lives so that our democracy may live. The veterans who are buried here serve as a lasting testament to the fact that when Granite Staters say live free or die, we really mean it. We owe the Granite Staters buried here and all of those who have served a debt that we can never fully repay, but we have an obligation to try each and every day. It's our task to give their sacrifice new purpose by building a country that's ever worthy of their service. Only those who have served truly know what their sir, that sacrifice entails. Live free or die has never been merely a phrase for them. Few moments made that more clear than when Granite Staters fought at the Battle of Gettysburg. 
One of the New Hampshire units that fought at Gettysburg was the 2nd Regiment New Hampshire Volunteer Infantry. When they first left New Hampshire in 1861, they were a thousand strong. By the time they marched to Gettysburg two years later, only a few hundred remained. On July 2nd, 1863, they found themselves in the center of the fighting, defending an orchard against a fierce rebel attack. If the rebels had been successful, the Union Army could have been cut in two. The battle might have even been lost, perhaps with the Union itself. At times, the Union line bent and wavered. Over half of the 2nd New Hampshire Infantry was lost. 21 out of 24 officers were killed or wounded. But when darkness fell, the Union still held the field. They won the battle and saved the Union. Years later, Granite Staters dedicated a monument to honor the soldiers of the 2nd New Hampshire Infantry lost at Gettysburg. One Granite Stater wrote a poem for the dedication, writing, not for yourselves you lived and died. Devotion so unselfish still inspires us with a patriot's pride, our own great mission to fulfill. Our own great mission to fulfill. That mission is what Abraham Lincoln spoke of in his Gettysburg Address. It falls on us, the living, to honor those who, quote, gave their last full measure of devotion by ensuring that government, quote, of, by, and for the people shall not perish from this earth, end quote. Lincoln knew that in order to ensure that those who died to save the Union did not die in vain, we had an obligation to build a Union that was worthy of saving. Lincoln took steps to do just that by working to pass the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery, making our country more free. In the same manner, we must honor the sacrifice of those who have served, not only by protecting our democracy, but by expanding its promise to more Americans. We know that our democracy is fragile and is always being tested. Sustaining it requires the ongoing dedication of each generation of Americans, of each of us here today. I learned that lesson from my father. My father served in World War II and survived the Battle of the Bulge. Dad tended to minimize his service because he was a company clerk, so he saw less combat than others. And he knew how lucky he was to have been alive. But as kids, my brother and sister and I learned to revere all of those who served in World War II, and in particular, the Battle of the Bulge. In ice and snow, in a winter in which only courage could sustain them, Americans helped save the world from fascism. They fought to build a future where their children and the world's children would be free. When I was growing up, my dad would sometimes lower his newspaper and lean across the breakfast table and ask me and my siblings, what are you doing for freedom today? It was a question he did not have to ask his fellow veterans, nor would we have to ask the soldiers of the 2nd New Hampshire Infantry or the Granite Staters buried here. We know that they were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. But for the rest of us, it's a question that we need to ask ourselves every day. What are we doing for freedom? What does it mean for us to honor the service and sacrifice of those who fought for freedom in the live free or die state? We answer that question by honoring those who have fallen, supporting those who serve, and doing right by veterans and their families. We answer that question by standing up for the freedom of all and working to expand the promise of our democracy to everyone. We answer that question by doing what Americans have always done when confronted with great danger, finding our capacity for courage. Our own work will not measure up to those we have lost, but by finding inspiration in their sacrifice and working to make our country a better place, we can say that like so many Granite Staters, both living and dead, we answered the call of our great mission to fulfill. So thank you all for being here. God bless those who we lost. May God bless our service members currently in harm's way. 
And may God bless New Hampshire and the United States of America. Be safe, everyone. Thank you, Senator Hassan. Now please welcome the Honorable Christopher Pappas. Thank you very much, Sean. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be with you all here today, and I want to thank uh, Senator Hassan, Senator Shaheen, Governor Sununu, General Michaelides for their comments. I want to commend uh, Sean Buck and the staff here at this cemetery for maintaining and continuing to create a space in New Hampshire uh, that pays tribute to so many of our veterans, their family members, and folks who have worn the uniform of this great nation. Um, thank you to the Department uh, of uh, American Legion New Hampshire, uh, Commander Paquin, who we'll be hearing from in just a moment, uh, and all the leadership of all of our VSOs who are here today, uh, as well as Commander Kenny, who's going to be offering some remarks too. So we know this uh, weekend presents many opportunities for Granite Staters, uh, but the ones that I've been most excited to participate in are ceremonies all across our great state that have brought people together with a common purpose, to celebrate our fallen heroes. As President Theodore Roosevelt said at Arlington National Cemetery in 1902, on July 4th, we celebrate the birth of our nation. On Memorial Day, we call to mind the deaths of those who died so that our nation might live. Following the end of, a, of the Civil War, it was a war that uh, cost nearly three quarters of a million American lives. The American people worked to heal the wounds that tore families apart, and they grieved. And in grieving our war dead, memories and remembrances began in uh, big cities and small towns and places like New Hampshire and states across our country. And the commemoration didn't begin with an order from Washington. It started out of the need from family members to pay tribute, to place flowers on the graves of the fallen long before Decoration Day and later Memorial Day were codified into law. People in New Hampshire and across our country paid honor to those that they had lost in a terrible war, those who had stepped forward and given their lives for this union and for our freedom today. Now, Granite Staters, we know, have a long and proud history of answering America's call to defend our democracy and freedom across the globe, and I want to thank all of our veterans and their family members who are represented here today. The names and examples of those who gave their lives in defense of the United States of America can never, ever be forgotten. We owe everything to these courageous men and women, and that's why it was really heartening to see so many Granite Staters coming out this Memorial Day weekend to remember those who've given the ultimate sacrifice. They are brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, sons and daughters who are absent now. We salute our Gold Star families who are here today and uh, stand with them in their continued grief. Um, we know that there are empty chairs at dinner tables, there are bedrooms that are frozen in time, missing voices at the other end of a telephone line. They may be gone, but they are anything but forgotten. And that's the charge we have today, to bear witness and to remember. President Lincoln described after the Civil War the responsibility of honoring the war dead. He called it the great task that's remaining before us. And we know it's a task that will never truly be complete. It's a task to ensure that those heroes who have laid down their lives for this country did not do so in vain. In the poem For the Fallen by Lawrence Binion, he wrote, they shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you for remembering. Thank you for all that you do, for showing your patriotism by being a part of this ceremony today. And thank you to the veterans and their families once again uh, for all your work to keep our country safe and strong. I want to add, if there's anything my office can do for any veterans who are here, please don't hesitate to reach out. That's what we're there for. And uh, it's a true honor to be able to serve in that capacity in Washington on the Veterans Affairs Committee. And I have to say, as divided as our politics happen to be today, uh, it's one place where we come together as Americans first, as it should be. So let's not forget what's great about this nation. Let's continue to honor those that have laid down their lives for all of us so that we may be free today. And may God bless all of our troops in, in harm's way, all of our Gold Star families, the state of New Hampshire, and our great country. And thank you for being here, and have a mindful Memorial Day. Thank you, Congressman Pappas. Now, please enjoy a salute to service played by the 39th Army Band. Please stand to be recognized when your service song is played.
sound awesome. Thank you so much. Our guest speaker is Commander David J. Kenney, U.S. Navy retired. Commander Kenney enlisted in the United States Navy in September 1975, completing numerous deployments around the world. After 14 years of enlisted service, he commissioned as a surface warfare officer aboard the USS Constitution, Old Ironsides, in February 1990. He served in many staff and command positions, culminating as officer in charge of Voluntary Support Unit 109, Navy Operations Support Command, where he oversaw coordination training for the Joint Funeral Honor Guard, often bringing him right here to the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. As a civilian, Commander Kenny is an information technology consultant. He serves on more boards than I can list here, but I will highlight his service on the New Hampshire, on the State Veterans Advisory Council and the New Hampshire Veterans Cemetery Association. Much of what you see in the Veterans Heritage Learning Center is a result of Dave's unrelenting effort and expertise. We are honored to have him speak to us today. Please give a warm welcome to a true servant leader, Commander David Kenny. Thank you, Sean. Thank you and good morning to you all. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I do appreciate you all clapping because it sends the breeze this way, <laughs> which is great. Um, to Governor Sununu, Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, Congressman Pappas, General Michaelitis, thank you all for your continued support for this ceremony and keeping the focus on its importance. And thanks also to the American Legion Department of New Hampshire for hosting this event today. Today I'd like to do something a little bit different, however. I'd like to talk about one of my favorite places, here. 
the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, I would even go so far as to say, is that it's not just a cemetery, but it's a characteristic of the state of New Hampshire, the great granite state, of which much like the old man of the mountain was for over a century. It was our ubiquitous symbol for this great granite state, and I think the cemetery merits that same level. Our 20 points of history, our buildings, the Memorial Walkway of the Learning Center, offer a distinct design coupled with the serenity of the location, and it says to me that this is the quintessential New Hampshire location. So distinctive that we incorporated the characteristics of this cemetery in the association's logo. This may sound a bit strange, but I love this cemetery. Every time I come here, it have, gives me such a profound sense of gratitude. But it also reminds me of how fleeting our mortality is, and a reminder that every day is a gift to make every day count. If you remember the movie Saving Private Ryan, when the mortally wounded Captain John Miller on the bridge, in his final words to Private Ryan, he says, James, earn this, earn it. That message was so simple and yet so powerful. It's a reminder to all of us to earn the freedom that was sacrificed here, to live the best life that we can, to be kind to one another, and to pay it forward when possible. I'd like to take you on a short historical journey, if I may. Shortly after the creation of the cemetery in 1997, we had our first burial here in November of that year. It was a Navy chief warrant officer and his wife. In 2002, our memorial walkway began to pay tribute to all those who served our nation with honor. In 2003, our 20 points of history, the Navy's, uh, excuse me, New Hampshire's military history that ring the bowl right here behind me were completed. In 2015, the Cemetery Association had an idea that this would be a great place to educate our future generations. And so in 2016, we built the Veterans Heritage Learning Center right behind the administration building to give students, teachers, and visitors a glimpse of over three centuries of service by New Hampshire's veterans that ensured our independence and our freedom. All these additions were provided by the generosity of people who also love this place. With the inevitable growth of our cemetery, today there are just under 16,000 interred here, where 11,400 plus are veterans. Imagine all of those stories. When I joined the Veterans Cemetery Association in 2013, after 15 years as the OIC for Navy Funeral Honors, it seemed like a logical segue for me to be able to come here after retirement and to continue my service to veterans. In the ensuing 10 years, I've had the privilege of dedicating the Navy Memorial on the Memorial Walkway, assist with almost every public event here, and somberly observe as our residency grew here with World War II, Korea, and Vietnam War veterans. In 2016, with the help of the Cemetery Association, I produced a documentary about our cemetery called The Living Memorial. If you've not seen it, you can find it on YouTube, on PBS, or you can see it at the Learning Center right behind us. The idea was to highlight the history of the cemetery and the importance through which the experience of a Gold Star family, and that family, the Ouellette family, whose son Michael, earned the Silver Star for his heroic actions in Afghanistan in 2009. They were so gracious in sharing their experience on film. Stephanie, who is now one of our board members and is here today, along with her brother Alan and their mother Donna, they talk about their loss and about what this place meant to them as part of the grieving and the healing process. What they said struck a chord. This cemetery is not just a place of loss, but a place of life. And they were so right. There's a vibrance here that few places of rest can claim. No matter what day of the week, there are people here visiting their loved ones, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers placing flags, wreaths, doing the spring and fall cleanup. If I could have a show of hands, please. How many people here in the crowd have ever volunteered to come here and place flags, wreaths, and do the spring cleanup? Look at all those hands, folks. That's why this place is great. I like to 
think of this place as a hallowed haven of heroes. As we are all caretakers and stewards of this place to ensure that the serenity and the dignity that is conveyed here remains for all time. Just imagine for every veteran here there's a place, there's a piece of history that should be told. If future generations are to completely understand the importance of those who ever donned the cloth of our nation, then those who lived in need, it's those who lived in need to share their experience. History books are full of facts and figures, but those books don't convey the real emotion and the sense of commitment of oneself to something greater than themselves. I remember growing up in the 50s and 60s, there were approximately 28 million veterans after, the, after World War II in Korea. In my neighborhood, almost every family had at least one, if not more. Today, fewer than 1% have ever served. And so the importance of understanding the service and sacrifice to me has never been more urgent. As time marches on, there are fewer and fewer veterans left to relate their experiences, to impart the real history from those who actually lived it. In my life, there were two veterans that influenced me significantly. Two men, same war, but very different perspectives on sharing their experiences. First was my father. He was a paratrooper with the 11th Airborne, 511th Parachute Infantry Regiment. They fought in the Pacific from 1944 until his uh, uh, occupation uh, of Japan in 1946 before he was discharged. Like most World War II veterans, they served, they came home, and they made a life and rarely spoke of their service. It wasn't until a year before he died that he started to talk about it. I learned that he was in the same group as Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone fame. He didn't have a lot of great things to say about Rod, but you know. <laughs> um, but he never spoke much about the battles that he was in, and that was typical of that generation. I wish I had pressed him more to talk about it when he was here, but I was fortunate to, uh, to connect with a historian from the 11th Airborne Division since then, and I've told him that I would be happy to contribute some of my father's artifacts to his third book on the 11th Airborne. And so that's my way of ensuring that my father's story continues. The other person, the other veteran, is Chief Petty Officer Otto Schwartz, who I met in the early 90s. His story began as a young crewman on the USS Houston during the Battle of Java Sea, and in late February 1942 was sunk by the Japanese. Otto was thrown overboard and almost getting machine gunned by patrolling Japanese, after which he spent three and a half years of hell on the Burma Death Railway, including building the now famous or infamous bridge over the River Kwai. I heard his stories many times over the years, and they never got old. I was in awe by the sheer courage, resilience, and determination to survive, as he and the other POWs showed under seemingly impossible odds. And as we know from history, many did not survive the death railway, but he did. And after returning home, he created the USS Houston Survivors Association with the remaining 266 survivors, and he spent the remaining portion of his life traveling the world, keeping the memory of his fallen shipmates alive in places like the Naval Academy, Army War College, PBS documentaries, and hundreds and hundreds of other venues who wanted to hear firsthand the account of history from someone who actually lived it. There are 11,400 stories here. Many, but not all, are now lost to time. So the Veterans Cemetery Association made a commitment to do what we could to ensure that more of our veteran stories don't fade into history. After all, our ancestors really lived through us especially when we continue to talk about them, telling their stories to our children and our grandchildren. This is exactly how our Native American ancestors kept their history and culture alive for countless generations. So I'll close today by asking the question, is it really strange to love a cemetery? Perhaps. But given all the people here today and throughout the year, I think not. This place is a true gem because of the dedicated people who care for it on a daily basis, like Sean Buck, Sue Bellavo, Teresa Rolf, Mary Hurdle, Ted Merrow, Jeff Ford, Marcus John, Shane Boudreau, Bob Wallace, and Lee Hurdle, our resident bugler who you'll soon hear 
And by the way, Lee has probably bugled close to 5,000 funerals here. All the volunteers of the Cemetery Association and all the volunteers like you who come here and continue to give of your time to show the love of the cemetery. Please give those folks a round of applause. And lastly, veterans, this is for you. Please tell your stories. Don't wait until all those experiences are great images from a long distant memory. Talk to your children, your grandchildren, and tell them what it was like to serve. Well, okay, you may have to edit some of the stories on the weekend furloughs <laughs> and the Liberty Ports. What happens on the Liberty Port stays at the Liberty Port. But remember, our history of service is not just about the weapons, the planes, or the machinery. It's about you, the people that served. You are the history. So however you choose to do it, find a way to ensure that your history is passed down before you take up residence here, so that future generations will benefit and understand the importance, the pride of being a veteran. Take a moment today to pray for all those who were lost in service and for those who returned and are from the front lines and are still battling their own private battles. God bless you all and God bless this great nation. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dave. Um, yep, I skipped to the commander of the American Legion. You noticed in your program. That's me. It's not my fault. It keeps me humble. Um, so please welcome to the podium the Department, American Legion Department of New Hampshire Commander, Leo Paquin. us up by height so <laughs> no worries I enjoy wearing a wool cap as long as I can in the sun so uh, worked out pretty well um, I'm trying to start with humor because I'm a crier my kids actually always bet on how long it'll take me to cry not whether I will or not but um, I'm, I'm actually over the last year and over the next years you'll be hearing be the one that's American Legion uh, program we're calling be the one um, the number one is an uncomfortable fact you ready Number one issue facing the veteran community is suicide. It's estimated between 17 to 22 veterans or service members take their lives every day. Every day, 6,000 a year. What can you do? Simple, just talk. Welcome a veteran home. You know, especially you Vietnam guys. America, not our finest hour. Welcome home. Ask a veteran in your life how they're doing. Just how you doing today? That's all it takes little talk, and then listen. Listen when they need to talk. Reach out when a veteran is struggling. Could be struggling or anything. <clears throat> pay the heat. Pay the heat, pay the electric bill. It could be financial, it could be emotional. It could be just, hey, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Come on by, come by the house. So we ask you to be the one. Some exciting legislation happened, I, I believe it was in February, any veteran in crisis, whether you're uh, receiving benefits or not, um, can get emergency um, mental health care at any VA facility in the world. Also, exciting, all you got to do is dial 988, press 1. It's the number one part of the suicide hotline. Somebody's there to talk to you, highly qualified individuals, it's well funded. We're lucky we actually, in New Hampshire, we have a very, very active uh, Congress, that includes Congress and the Senate. Um, or you can text 838-255. That's all I want to say today. Be the one. Take the time. Thank you. The placing of the wreath will be done by Governor Sununu and Commander Paquin.
Delivering the benediction will be Chaplain Lisa Treadwell, Department Chaplain of the American Legion Auxiliary. Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those who have courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. We remember our departed loved ones. Those we honor will be a part of our lives forever. Bless the families of our fallen troops. Fill their homes and lives with strength and peace. Amen. Amen. To honor the fallen and those they left behind, Master Sergeant Lee Hurdle will play taps. It is proper for military and veterans to render a hand salute and for civilians to place their hand over their heart and remove their headgear during the playing of taps. <laughs> 